let us all stand and sing our theme song, Jesus is all the world to me, hymn number 87. For tonight's season of prayer, I shall be opening it, and then you will proceed to pray by twos, then I shall conclude the prayer. Shall we all kneel? Our loving God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for another day of rest that you have given to us, for the opportunity to come back here, to commune with you, and join you in celebrating this special day. Dear God, here we are sinners for another week. We, ha we may have committed mistakes once again, but dear God, tonight is a season for forgiveness, a time wherein we could come back to you and refresh ourselves. Dear God, here are the prayers of your children. Please hear them out.
Dear God, we thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you once again for the blessing of the Sabbath. We thank you for the privilege of being called your children, for the privilege of receiving your love and your forgiveness. Be with us as we go through this special program tonight, as we try to reconnect with you. Forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Good after, Good evening. Happy Sabbath. So it is indeed a holy and wonderful night for us to worship and praise God this this evening. God has given us this opportunity to be united to praise and worship His holy name. So it is our obligation to let go of those worldly things so that we can center. Christ in our worship. I am sharing to you this verse that is found in Psalms chapter 96, verses 1 to 4. It says, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise His name. Proclaim His salvation day after day. Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous deeds among all people. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. So it is the time to be refreshed once again, for we all know that Jesus is the essence of our faith. So good evening once again, and happy Sabbath to everyone.
There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. I would like to read to you um, our text for this evening. It's found in John 14, verses 1 to 3. You know that, right? Let not your heart be troubled. You who believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I will go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Let's bow our heads for a prayer. Our wonderful, merciful Savior, we thank you for this wonderful Sabbath day that you have given to each one of us, for the life, for the health, for sustaining us, O oh Lord. This very moment, we would like to ask for the forgiveness of our sins, O oh Lord. I ask the presence of the Holy Spirit that may he be the one who speak through me, O oh Lord. Hide me behind the cross, for you know I am flawed. You know I am unworthy, O oh Lord. But then you called me, and because of that, I trust in you. I trust that you will deliver your message through me. May the people see your glory, not mine, O Lord. And may their hearts be touched, O Lord. This all we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The waiting game. I entitled my topic this evening, The Waiting Game. Why? Waiting game means a situation in which you wait to see what happens before you decide what you will do. You're waiting for something to happen before deciding on what to do. It's about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Have you ever waited for somebody or something? Mamich? Yes? I think all of us have waited for something or somebody, right? Dumating ba sila? Dumating? Dumating. <laughs> so they came. Well, we oftentimes wait for a lot of things to happen. Like, if we have parents overseas, right? we're waiting for their pasalubong, for the iPhone, for the iPad, for the uh, chocolates, right? And if ever our parents are uh, office workers and they travel far from, their, from your homes, you'll expect a Jollibee when you were younger, right? We're waiting for a Jollibee and we're very eager to wait for them because we know they have pasalubong. O kaya kahit donut lang sapat na, di ba? So we've been waiting for a lot of things. Do you know this dog? Who's that dog? Hachiko. Bakit kilala nyo? <laughs> and Hachiko is actually a national hero for Japanese. Why? Bakit? Ano bang ginawa ni Hachiko? Naghintay. He waited. For what? For his owner. He waited for his owner. Actually, he's waiting from morning. He's going to see his owner off to work to Shibuya train station. And then, on the afternoon after his owner's work, he'll again wait for uh, his owner's return. His owner is Professor Yuno. I don't know how it's pronounced, but it spells like U-E-N-O. Is it Yuno? Uno? Yeah. He is a professor in agriculture at Tokyo University. And he had this dog, Hachiko. They became best of friends. And because of that, they were inseparable. 
Well, one day, what happened one day? What happened? Sabi niyo, alam niyo. His owner did not return. Why? Because he had a cerebral hemorrhage wherein he died at work and he never returned again. But though he died, another, a new owner owned Hachiko and for 10 years of Hachiko's life, yung remaining 10 years niya, he still waited very patiently until he died. Well, this evening, we have three points. What are those three points? The bride, the bridegroom, and the marriage. So, as we continue with our study this evening, you can see, bakit ano bang connect ng bride, bridegroom, at marriage sa waiting? Parang ang layo naman ang sinasabi ni Ate Camille dun. So, I want you to know who the bride is, who the bridegroom is, and what marriage is all about. What is this? PIC. <laughs> A church. Philippine International Church. Why do you think I put that picture there? Dami kong tanong, no? Well, I actually put that because it's the bride. Not the building, but the people in it. Because you can't call a church, a church, if there's no congregation worshiping inside. Diba? So we are the church. We are the bride. It says in Ephesians 5 verse 25, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. So was it the building that Christ gave up himself? It's for us, right? So we are the church. Next is the bridegroom. Can you see that? It says in Revelation 19 verse 7, Let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made himself ready. So it says there, the bride has the Lamb. Who is the Lamb? Jesus Christ was the Lamb. And if there is a bride, anong kapartner ng bride? The bridegroom. So who is the bridegroom? It's Jesus Christ. It simply tells us that it's Jesus Christ, actually. The church is the bride of Christ. Here in the marriage, we have four faces. Alam nyo ba yon? Bago ba kayo manligaw, alam nyo ba kung ano yung faces na yon? Bago kayo magpakasal. So here are some. The wooing face. Anong ginagawa sa wooing face, Ate Camille? If a man loved a woman, he would interact with her in such a way as to draw her to himself. So para maging close sila, you need the wooing face. At this time, they uh, maybe text each other or uh, they talk to each other in the hallway like that. And then we have the courtship phase. In here, after the girl or the woman is finally drawn to the man, the couple would enter into the courtship phase, getting to know one another and growing in their love. Actually, the courtship phase doesn't stop when the girl finally said yes to you. It continues on and on. Sabi nga dito, growing in their love. Kasi every day we grow. Every minute we grow, di ba? So the courtship continues. But then, the man would propose. When finally you're ready, hindi after courtship pa, magpo-propose na. But when you're finally ready, when you're at the right age, you're at the right mind, and God is already the center of your relationship, the man would decide to propose. The proposal. If her answer was yes, the bridegroom would depart. Bakit? 
Bakit aalis yung bridegroom? May ikakasal na nga sila. Ba't kailangan malis? Do you know the answer? Para makamove on. <laughs> Actually, the man would depart from his bride-to-be with a promise to her that he will return. Because the bridegroom would be preparing a place for his bride. He would prepare a place. Bakit? Magpapakasal ba kayo? Wala kayong bahay. Diba? Ano? San kayo titira? Sa school? Sa school? <laughs> sa kung san-san lang. Sa tabi-tabi, ganon. Diba hindi? We need a house. Um, besides that, he is also, Jesus, actually, is waiting for us to come back. Diba yung bridegroom si Jesus? He'll, he is also waiting for us to come back because He is giving us the time to reflect, to realize, to know our sins and to finally be able to surrender ourselves to Him. Because He doesn't like na once you enter the marriage, bigla ka nalang aayaw. Na once kinasal na kayo, Dahil nagsawa ka na, dahil maraming differences, you want to go, you want to separate ways. But then, He's coming back to earth for one reason. Because He loves us and He wants to be with us. Jesus wants many people to return to heaven with Him. He doesn't want anyone to perish. So bukod sa, He's preparing a place for us, just as what the verse tells us, that He's going to prepare a place for us, and He will come again to receive us. May face na kailangang maghintay ng bride tayo, because we have to reflect, because we have to understand, and we have to accept Him. Na siya lang, na walang iba. Kasi when you enter marriage, hindi naman pwedeng may iba ka, di ba? Di ba? Hindi naman pwedeng um, iba yung interest mo or mag-aaral. I mean, um, ano ba to? Kunyari, you're in a marriage already and then you decided, ay, ayoko na pala. Hindi pwedeng ganun eh. Hindi siya. Tulad yung sinasabi ng mga matatanda, it's not like rice. Yung mainit na kanin, na kapag sinubo mo, di ba napasok ka, iluluwa mo ulit. It's not like that. Wala tayong, um, hindi tayo pwedeng magsisi sa huli. Dapat yun lang yung choice natin. Because He deeply, passionately loves us, He wants to return for us. Just as what He said, I will come again. Think of someone you like to be with. Someone whose company you really enjoy, your mom or dad, your best friend, a classmate, maybe your grandparents. We like to be with those who love us, just as what Christ wants also to experience. That's how he loves us. It says, in Hosea 2, verses 19 and 20, because God wants a special relationship with us. The question is, why must us, the church, be married with Him? Pwede namang, Lord, I surrender everything to you. Why do, we why do we need to have that union? Why do we need to be married with Him? Pwede namang, Lord, I trust in you. Lord, susunod naman ako sa'yo. Lord, magpapakabait naman ako. Lord, I will follow the Ten Commandments. So, we don't need to be married with each other. But then, in Hosea, it says, He wants to have a special re relationship with us. He wants us to know who He really is. I will bind you to me forever with chains of righteousness and justice and love and mercy. I will withdraw to you to me in faithfulness and love, and you will really know me then as you never have before. Gusto niyang makilala natin siya lalo. Standing before us with the promise of unwavering faithfulness, He offers an eternal union that will never be broken. 
most of us, actually, hindi pala most of us, dahil hindi pa naman tayo kasal, most of the people nowadays, most of the married people, they decide to separate ways. Nakalungkot, di ba? Actually, maybe some of us are experiencing that. And it saddens me more that the Philippines is actually pushing forward the law about divorce. Bakit kasi you, you're united through Christ, but then you decide to part ways. In the first place, dapat hindi na kayo nag-decide na maging magkasama kung magsisisi lang kayo sa huli. Diba? But then, Christ promised na hindi natin mararanasan yun if we would be married with Him. That eternal union is the thing that will happen. Is the thing that the second coming is telling us. Now, once He come again, once He comes again, He will be married with us. You know them. You know them. How many are they? Five. Bakit kaya sila five? Ha? Huh? <laughs> so I want to share with you the parable of the ten virgins. I think you know it already, but then I would like to share it with you. Because it's very beautiful to reflect on the message that this brings us. It's to 46 that the kingdom of heaven is like the ten virgins who took their lamps and waited for the bridegroom. Five are wise, five are foolish. Bakit sila naging foolish? Because they did not bring an extra oil. Bakit naging wise yung kabila? Because they bring an extra oil. Actually, the ten ver uh, the oil, actually this message, actually. I heard it last Friday at PIC with Pastor Valencia talking. I was really inspired to share this message to you as I was um, reflecting. So, as the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and asleep. But at midnight, there was a cry. Here is a bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. Ano kaya sa tingin nyo nangyari sa foolish virgins? Siyempre, wala na silang lamp. So they were asking for the five wise virgins, Can we have some? So nagsuggest na lang yung mga wise na, Pumili na lang kayo kasi kailangan din namin to. And then, the foolish virgins decided to buy. Nung bumili sila, and then the bridegroom came. Wala sila. Ang naabutan ng bridegroom, yung five wise virgins. And after he met them, he entered the hall and shut the door. The five foolish virgins were knocking, Lord, Lord, papasukin mo kami. Lord, sige na, papasukin mo kami. Nalit lang naman kami ng konti, papasukin mo na kami. Sa teacher natin, okay lang, no? She'll still allow us to go. She'll still allow us to enter the room, even if we're late. But then, the door was shut. God said, truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you don't know when is the hour or day that he will come. Those who are ready, those who have the lamp, who have an extra oil for their lamp, or those who have waited patiently will be the only ones to enter the kingdom of heaven. Pagdating doon, 
wala nang magsabi, hindi mo na pwedeng sabihin na, Lord, kaya mo naman akong papuntahin dyan eh, sige na. ba? Diba? Konti lang naman eh yung kasalanan ko eh, ba? Diba? Lord, ba? Diba? Anak mo naman ako, okay lang. But no. What does the oil represents? The oil represents the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guides us, diba? He is, um, He's instructing us of what to do, if this is right, if this is wrong. And it says in the Bible that when our journey goes longer and longer and longer and longer, we will not survive it without the extra oil, without the Holy Spirit. I want everyone to remember this. Not all of the people who waited will be brought to heaven. But naghintay naman yung foolish women, na, Pero hindi sila nakapasok. Dahil kulang sila ng oil. Dahil wala yung Holy Spirit. Hindi sila nakapasok dahil doon. Pero what shall we do to be able to wait that long? It says we must be watchful, we must be on guard, we must be prayerful. Anong nakikita niyo sa picture? Sino yung dog? Sino yung owner? Diba? Si Hachiko yan. And then, the professor, his owner, his first owner. This statue was made, this bronze statue was made to commemorate the 90th um, death anniversary of Professor Yuno. The university decided to um, create that because for 20 years, the professor has served the university very well. We can see there that Hachiko was reunited with its owner. Through a statue, they were reunited. It says in an article, at long last, they were reunited. Through a statue. Through a statue. Do you want that? Through a statue na lang um, mag-reunite with Christ? Through a statue. What, how wonderful it would be if we will be reunited with Christ personally. Yung nakikita natin siya. Now finally, He's there. Now finally, the one who's been waiting for us. The one who we've been waiting for is there. Do you want to be with Him? Do you want to be with Him in heaven? Gusto nyo ba? Bakit wala akong naririnig? Gusto nyo ba? Yes. Naantok na ba kayo? Yes. <laughs> so, the question is, do we want to be with Him? We know how much He's been waiting for us. We know how much we are waiting for Him. But it's still on our hearts and still on our minds that the, the, the decision we'll be making will be the one to see kung ano bang kahihinat na natin. Is Nina there? And for this part of the program, we have an activity. Will it be by group? No. So, it's here. Well, everyone will be having a cut-out heart. Everyone, each one. Ayan, thank you for assisting. And I would like you to write on one side the things that you think will be important in a possible husband or spouse, wife or husband. On the other side, you write down 
the things Jesus tells us about himself as you read the following. At the end, we will compare what you write. So to those who are already married, um, siguro you just put um, the characteristics of your spouse at, at this moment, syempre. And to our high school students, to our teenagers, to our singles, ayan, you can write what you've been dreaming of. Anong klaseng asawa ba ang gusto ninyo? So you can um, divide the heart into two. You can fold it. The other side is for the characteristics or attributes of the one you want to be with in the future, your spouse. And the other side is for what uh, character God possesses. Is everyone done? Nipa? Is everyone done? Yes. Those people are done. Can you raise your hand? So, ayan, marami rami na ang tapos. I just would like to explain why we did that activity. Look at the things that you wrote down that might be important in a future spouse. Look back on the other side. Do you see that Jesus' character, the character of love that God shows toward us, meets and exceeds all the things that we need? Can you see if there's a mirror? If the future spouse that you're looking for is a mirror of God's attributes. Is he like God? Is he an example of God's character? Sometimes, we spend so much effort proving that we believe and why we believe it that we forget to look at the actual beauty of the thing that we believe in. We miss Jesus, his true character, in our proof. That is never God's intention. He wants us to look at everything we do and believe through the light of his love. That's what Jesus came to demonstrate to us when he came to earth the first time.
self-seeking. It is not easily angered. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. And this love that this verse is talking about is God. It says in 1 John 14 verse 6, God is love. How do you feel that He loves you? He has been loving you all this time. Despite everything you've done, haven't you felt it? For being able to wake up each day, for the life, for the health, for His sustenance to each one of us, that we can eat, we can play, we can study, we can talk, we can smell, we can see, we can hear, we can feel, we can worship, we can have concern to other people, we can pray, and we can love. In every step of the way, He's there. Haven't you noticed? When you're traveling, going to school, or traveling, going home, you're safe because He's there. For having a friend or parents who are there ready to listen to our uncertainties, to our problems, to the trials that we are encountering, He's there. To the nights that you don't know what to do, to the nights you're crying yourself out, and you're telling yourself, Lord, I cannot do it. I'm tired of this life. To those moments that we feel we have no one beside us, He's there. I want you to remember the verse, my favorite verse. It's from Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come, and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. A lot of times, we've been telling, we've been tweeting, we've been posting, Lord, ayoko nang mabuhay. Lord, pagod na pagod na ako sa buhay na to. Titweet tayo. Lord, gusto ko nang magpakamatay. Lord, parang wala namang pag-asa eh. Lord, suko na ako. Ayoko na. We're not 
realizing he's been there. He's always there. That he's actually coming for us. He's actually waiting for us to just surrender everything to him. Akala natin, kaya natin sa sarili natin. And then when we fall down, we think, mag-isa lang tayo. When all the lives Trials, challenges, circumstances, struggles ay dumating sa'yo. Feeling mo mag-isa ka. God is just waiting for you. Inihintayin na yung call mo. Kaya mo ang mag-call sa friends mo overseas. But then God, nakatabi mo lang. You can't call Him. You can, di ba? You can. We forget how much He loves us, that He even died for each one of us, even if we are sinners. He was never tired of waiting, but we are always tired. Despite everything that we've done wrong against Him, despite being so stubborn, despite being unloyal, being unforgiving, engaging ourselves in social media, engaging ourselves in computer games, in online games, engaging ourselves in our relationships with other people, which is not giving our all to Him. We forget His waiting. Why can't we wait for someone who is waiting for us, but we can wait for someone who isn't coming? The waiting will be long. At times, you will feel tired, you will feel hopeless. But remember, Hindi lang tayo yung naghihintay. May naghihintay din sa atin. He's very eager to be with us. He's longing for you. He's longing for your attention. He's waiting for you to leave everything in His hands. To leave all your plans to Him to leave all your problems to Him. All your concerns na makakapasaba ko. Yung concern mo na, Lord, may kasama ba ako? May kaibigan ba ako? Lord, si Mama, si Papa, lagi nilang nag-aaway. May pag-asa pa ba? If you would want to leave everything to Him right at this very moment. If you would want to make Him as your priority, if you would want to leave K-drama, to leave your phones aside, to leave everything, every pleasure that we have in this world, I request you to stand. If you want to give up everything to Him, your challenges if you just like someone who will hear you can you please stand and if you finally realized that God is my refuge and strength that Jesus Christ is my Savior I want to proclaim it in all the world. I want to be proud of it. That one man from heaven saved me from the bondage of sin. If you would like to finally tell the world, Lord, I'm accepting you as my personal Savior. Lord, hindi na ako natatakot. Kaya ko nang ipagsigawan. Na kahit makasalanan ako, 
undeserving ako. He still died for me. Na narealize ko na talaga pala ako para sa iyo. Kahit minsan nakakalimutan ko magbasa ng Bible, even if sometimes I forget to pray, when I go home, I just sleep. Even if when I wake up, the first thing that comes to my mind is to open my phone to check if someone is chatting, is texting me. I forgot that I don't need a text message. I don't need a message from messenger. But you're all I need. And I'm very willing. I'm very willing to surrender everything to you because you are my savior. If any one of you would like to accept him. Can you please go in front and be proud that he is your savior? If you would like to accept him in your life, can you please go in front? I will pray for you. Just as the footprints on the sand tells us that when we can we can carry the burden of this life Jesus will carry us Jesus will be there for us even if we leave him even we forget about him even if kahit lagi natin siyang sinisisi Lord bakit mo pinayagan tong mga bagay na to na mangyari even if everything's against you kala mo wala ka Actually, very willing. He's very, very willing to get all those burdens from you and to be with you in heaven. Let's pray. Our loving God, our Savior, you are so mighty, O oh Lord. We can't comprehend your strength, your power your presence tonight we've seen a lot of souls willing to surrender to you O oh Lord proud to say that you are their Savior they cannot contain their happiness that someone died for them we thank you for this souls O oh Lord we also thank you for the message of the second coming that when we wait we will gain that when we wait we will be with you lord thank you so much for giving us this hope that this life is not yet over if we die that despite everything that has happened in our lives we can still be good we can still be with you no matter who we are no matter what we've been through no matter what we've done You'll always be there. Lord, I would like to ask the Holy Spirit to touch the hearts of the people who are still struggling right now to accept you as their personal Savior. Because he is the only one who can help them make up their mind, who can help them decide. If they decide voluntarily, O oh Lord, not because their friends told them to, not because they just feel, but
but because you touched them, because they really want to know you more. They really want to be with you. Oh, Lord, I would like to pray for the congregation, for, for being willing, oh, Lord, to stand for you. And may this stand of them be seen also on the days that will come, on the times of persecution, on the end times, oh, Lord, may they still stand for you. May, may they still be willing, oh, Lord, to give up everything for you. May they be strong enough to stand for what they believe. Oh, Lord, please forgive us. Oftentimes we forget you are there. Oftentimes we forget we have a friend in you. We have a father. We have someone who loves us dearly, no matter what. Thank you so much for this life that you've given to each one of us. Lord, I would like to ask that may your children always remember that we are going to heaven if we surrender everything to you. Lord, help us. Help us in our struggles. Help us overcome addiction computer games, in K-drama, in social media, or in our vices, oh Lord. Alcohol, drinking, smoking. Lord, please help us. Please help your people be an instrument so that other people would also know that you are God, that you love us, that there is hope in this world despite the wars, despite the wicked world, the cruel world, the sins. Give us the hope, O oh Lord. Inspire us, motivate us in each day, and help us make you as a first and last person we call to, we call upon every minute, every second of the day, O oh Lord. This all we pray, we love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.